Agriculture is the very soul of the society of the South. From the sandy soil of the coastal plain, to the red clay of the Piedmont, to the black earth of North Georgia, the sweat of every farmer's brow is woven into this agricultural legacy. Generations of Americans removed from the farm look across the horizon to see farmers of today tilling and planting the same soil that settlers of the first colonies broke. Intricately inlaid into the fabric of Georgia farming is the College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences. For more than 200 years, individuals have served the college and served humanity by developing new and better ways to feed and clothe the world's population. Many of these individuals have inspired others to perform. A select few have inspired greatness. To recognize these individuals, the College of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences Alumni Association founded the Georgia Agricultural Hall of Fame. Founded in 1972, the Hall of Fame honors those who have made extraordinary contributions to production, agribusiness, and education. What started as a local club for boys who were interested in growing corn that was taller than their friends has turned into one of the best youth organizations in the nation. George Claude, or G.C. Adams, is the man who started the first corn club in Newton County. Since these clubs were the predecessors of Georgia 4-H, an organization that has impacted every corner of the state over the last century, Adams is known as the father of 4-H in Georgia. Claude Adams' recognition into the College Agricultural Hall of Fame is certainly long overdue. Uh, Mr. Adams' vision of a boys corn club has grown into something uh, much larger that uh, has impacted literally millions of young people in the state of Georgia. Adams was born the 12th of 16 children, spending most of his early life on the family farm. He had less than one year of formal education, but was a diligent student. I've, I've always said this since I was a teenager, he was the smartest man I ever knew. And it was, uh, can't was not in his vocabulary. Even though Adams never attended high school or college, much of his career and life was dedicated to improving the education of boys and girls in the classroom and on the farm. The transfer of knowledge from children to adults uh, was so important in the early boys' corn clubs, and we see that still today. Uh, young people uh, learn new skills and carry it home, and their parents embrace it, and I think that's still happening in 4-H. We know it's happening in 4-H today. As superintendent, Adams worked to improve the conditions of county schools. To combat poor schooling conditions, Adams combined four Newton County schools creating the first consolidated school in the South. And he was, he said, all men are equal, regardless of the color, or the income, or the station in life. And he never looked down on anybody. Didn't matter who they were, or how, uh, how poor they were, how rich they were, all were equal to him. Adams also worked to bring more students into schools by establishing what may have been one of the earliest school buses, a long covered mule driven wagon. The wagon helped bring rural students to school. As school superintendent in Newton County, I think Claude Adams was interested in trying to help young boys uh, learn how to grow a better crop of corn. And in turn, they carried that information home to their fathers and, and improved agricultural production in our state. Uh, I think his vision was, was great, but I don't think he realized what it was going to turn into. He earned his place as George's father of 4-H by organizing the first boys corn club in Newton County in 1904. The girls tomato canning club, created in 1913, was an offshoot of the boys clubs. Both are recognized as predecessors of Georgia 4-H. Claude Adams started out with 151 boys in Newton County in the Boys Corn Club. Today, uh, we serve over 184,000 young people 
who participate in the 4-H program uh, across the state of Georgia. When the National 4-H Hall of Fame was created for the centennial celebration, Adams was one of the first 100 deductees. Adams furthered his reach into the agricultural community when he was elected to the Georgia House of Representatives in 1926. He served on the Agriculture and Education Committees, and in 1932, he was elected Commissioner of Agriculture. And certainly Claude Adams uh, did not realize what 4-H was going to become or what the Boys Corn Clubs were going to become, but he's left a legacy that uh, has helped educate thousands of young people, um, literally millions of young people across our state. He raised seven children with his wife, Lily Green, on their farm in Newton County. Adams died in 1949 at the age of 81. It just made you, I guess, give chills that this was going to be my family. And it really, it makes you very proud to be a part of a family, to be remembered like this. Congratulations to G.C. Adams, the 2013 inductee into the Georgia Agricultural Hall of Fame. Louis Boyd's commitment to agriculture has helped shape the Animal and Dairy Sciences Department, which he led during his career, and the entire College of Agricultural and Environmental Sciences, and attitudes towards agriculture across the state as well. I didn't think anything else existed except agriculture. <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, really, I, I didn't know about. Uh, when we would go to town, to the county seat on Saturday afternoons, uh, when I was a little older, I, I could see other people that uh, walked around uh, without overalls on and, uh, and uh, muddy shoes. Uh, but, uh, and I thought there must be something else somewhere, but I, I really didn't think that anybody uh, born or raised on a farm, grew up there, would have a chance to go anywhere else. Boyd came to the University of Georgia in 1972 after earning his master's degree at the University of Kentucky and his PhD at the University of Illinois. I, I continued dating long distance uh, that first year and, and that 300 mile travel didn't go over too well with freshman uh, college courses. So I, I didn't do too well, but uh, we did get married the next, uh, she and I got married the next uh, summer and uh, she got a job on campus at the University of Kentucky in Lexington uh, as secretary in the English department. So. After we got married, uh, we moved up there uh, in a suitcase uh, on a Greyhound bus and uh, uh, she started work and then when school started, uh, I found an apartment and we got, uh, uh, I got started then to, uh, in college with a purpose. His first position at UGA was to manage teaching, research, and extension activities as chairman of the Animal Sciences Division. He was instrumental in merging the Department of Animal and Dairy Sciences. Many of the faculty hired by Boyd in the 1970s established themselves as outstanding researchers and teachers, with many becoming department heads or research directors. I came in 72 and, and worked in the animal science program, and at that time when I came here, uh, the uh, Four Towers area was a dairy barn, and the dairy herd was right here on campus at that time. During his first years at UGA, Boyd proposed a new option for ag alumni, the ability to have lifelong membership. This proposal led to the creation of the Eterna Fund, an endowment that has provided over $150,000 in scholarships to entering freshmen and transferring juniors. I, I think being involved with the Ag Alumni Association and, and getting uh, pe people involved with that is, is, is really the, the great thing that it's just got to be. I mean, all alums have got to be involved, the faculty have got to be involved, and getting the faculty and uh, alums uh, involved uh, with the university is the only way that the University of Georgia will succeed in, uh, in being strongly supported. After his retirement in 1992, Boyd was asked to develop and lead the statewide advisory board for the agricultural experiment stations in Georgia, which later became the CAES Advisory Council. 
Dr. Boyd is one of those genuine individuals that is such a loving, caring person. And I find that when there are people in need, that's when he responds. Boyd continues to maintain an active role in the community. He has been on several Presbyterian Church committees in Tennessee, Michigan, and Georgia. He was the founding advisor of the Farmhouse Fraternity Tennessee chapter. He was vice president of the Knoxville Tennessee Optimist Club and president of the Jennings Mill Country Club. He has also served on the board of the directors at the Career Development Center in Northeast Georgia. Boyd actively serves on the United Way Advisory Board and was named Oconee County Volunteer of the Year in 2006. Having him as a board member uh, has just been so helpful to me. Um, he knows how to run an organization and he has given me so much help. He is a volunteer you can count on. When he says he's going to do something, he, he will do it. He will follow up. He'll be there back at your office with what you need before you get back. Boyd's induction into the Georgia Agricultural Hall of Fame is not his first honor. In 2012, Boyd was inducted into the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture's Hall of Distinguished Alumni. Well, I, I think that uh, it, it's been a good ride for uh, the years we have. We, we just uh, celebrated our uh, 85th birthdays this year and our 65th wedding anniversary. And, uh, and, and I guess uh, that what I heard her say once, somebody asked uh, ask her what, uh, how she would describe uh, the, staying together for 65 years uh, in this. And uh, she said, well, when we were born, if something was broke, you, you fixed it instead of throwing it away. So <laughs> I, I guess that's it. She's still trying to fix me. <laughs> Congratulations to Louis Boyd, the 2013 inductee into the Georgia Agricultural Hall of Fame.